One of the massive lies that's been banded around the internet for absolutely years now is that you need to build an enormous list in order to be successful. When we talked to Troy Broussard this week, he actually showed us how to use a small list and huge levels of customer engagement to run a really successful business. So, we made a boo-boo. Uh-oh, we learned, we learned a lesson yesterday. We did. So, if you've watched yesterday's video, which of course you have, because you're very well behaved, uh, you might have noticed the audio quality was not up to its usual level of scratch. No, its usual level of scratch, indeed, because we forgot to activate this microphone in the computer. You will also have noticed, also, that I looked like I'd just come in from a wedding. <laughs> so uh, it was it was a day definitely worth apologising for. So sorry, but the content was good, so we decided rather than re-record it and try and match the same level of content because this is not scripted. I was. Uh, uh, do, I do not read the script for this. No, is that your part? Yeah. That was your line. Sorry, <laughs> as you can see, we're reading the teleprompter like this. Do you ever see that when people's eyes go back and forth on the teleprompter? Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, uh, so going back to what we were talking about today, uh, when I started out online, I uh, had this idea to build a list of ten thousand subscribers. And was that just a number that you plucked out of nowhere? Like, it seemed 10, like a 000? good number. Like that's a. I, I aspired to have a list of ten. I feel like a professional people. now. Yeah. Ten thousand. So I started out, for. made a squeeze page, stuck up a thing, did all the old-fashioned stuff, started driving traffic to it, and it took me about nine months to build a list of 10,000 people and I decided I wasn't going to try and sell anything to them until I hit that number because I thought that way when I do try and sell them stuff like it's going to be it's going to make some damage as opposed to when you try and sell stuff to a hundred people or yeah it's, it's, it's hard work so it's, it's also disheartening like you, I think sometimes you, you you resist from sending out to your list in case nobody buys the thing you, you know what it's like when you put a new product out and you're like um, I'm a bit scared oh I'll not promote it just yet because it's validation isn't it yeah so I thought I'll build it up and I got to 10 I think I got to 12,000 and then actually now it's time to start mailing it so I did and uh, nobody bought anything and they unsubscribed in droves and I had been keeping in touch with them I'd been sending them regular content I was doing like ad swaps with other people so they were getting stuff from me free stuff but I think I'd like brainwashed them into thinking oh he's the guy who just gives us free stuff all the time so after nine months for some of those people um, I was then mailing them stuff and, and they were just unsubscribing in massive quantities as soon as, uh, you started to pitch as, soon as I started selling anything so I realised actually you have to sell stuff straight away but I think also so uh, now, this is where Troy comes in really, is his whole vision of actually building lists of customers rather than lists of subscribers. I think one of the things that really came out of that, like you say, he's talking about building lists of customers, not subscribers. Well, I don't know about you, but a lot of people will very, will very, will very often mail your subscribers, your non-customers, way more often and with more vigour. It's a good word, isn't it? With more vigour and more passion than they will their existing customers. You think, well, they've already bought a thing from me. These people over here, they're freeloaders. They haven't given me any money yet. I've got to really hit them hard. And the truth is, they haven't proven they are capable of giving you any money. They haven't proven that they've got the facilities, the abilities to actually be able to purchase from you and invest in you. Whereas the customers, they've shown you they've got a credit card or a means of making payment, they're interested in your stuff, and not only that, they're a step further down that line, which is they already get you. They already have engaged with your stuff. So they're, they're in a much tighter, deeper relationship with you because they've watched your training or they've bought a product from you and they know they can trust you with their payment information, their very valuable information. So what Troy talks about in this episode of Three Marketers Walk Into a Podcast, is he talks about how do you increase and maximize the value of your customers. So by how do you communicate with them to keep them highly engaged? Because what do you do when a customer buys from you? Okay, you go, right, okay, well, I'll just focus on selling more stuff to people who haven't bought yet, like most people, like we just said. Or do you actually move on and say, actually, we're going to nurture this relationship and take it to the next level? It's a bit like going, oh, I've got a lot of first dates. Yeah. You might get a snog at the end of the day, mightn't you? But then, if you take it no further than anybody, you're never going to get anywhere, are you? You're never going to have marriage and the kids, are you? I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you went with marriage and kids there <laughs> as opposed to the one night stand or something else. Anyway, I think thinking about th this whole thing, the interesting thing is because regardless of what service you use, probably anyway, for the most part, autoresponders, CRMs, you are going to pay to a certain extent for the number of people you store the number of contacts sure. you've got. And I would guess you probably, and this is no data to back this up, big disclaimer, I'm plucking numbers out of the air. You probably need 
three, five, or ten subscribers for every customer you've got in terms of the amount of money you can make from them straight away. Okay. I would imagine customers. We know making that first sale is the hardest. Once they've bought something from you, that first the next sale is the hardest. <laughs> you weren't expecting karaoke, folks, were you? <laughs> Not at this time. Um, so yeah, so I think that uh, I think that's interesting. In my experience, anyway, you probably need several subscribers to make the same amount of money as every customer you would yeah, need, and, yeah. and most people would agree. I think. So I think what's interesting is we actually pay more money to store all these subscribers without, again, as you say, any proof that they've got even a credit card. And I think that that's all the willingness to put their credit card information in on the internet to us scammers on the internet. <laughs> Terrible scammers. Um, so I think that that's, that's the interesting thing. And there is something to be said for it. Even after talking to Troy, I did come off the call and reflect and think about the direction of my business and think, do you know what? There is something to be said for just having a thing on the internet, a, a low price offer. And you drive the, the front end to that, and that's all you've got. There's no freebie. I mean, I haven't done it, but it's a thing that's worth thinking about. Well, we talked about it in one of my issues, didn't we, remember? I was yeah, driving just cold having... traffic straight into a $69 yeah, dollar yeah. And thing. Have, and have no free product. There's a lot to be said. A lot to be said. And Troy talks about that as well as which metrics to be looking at in order to maximize your customer value. It's so really this goes really hand in hand with the, the data-driven marketing episode with Nathan a few days ago. And there's obviously we talked in that episode about lifetime customer value and those things. But I think if you look in this episode, Troy gives you another metric that really goes hand in hand with that. And I think mm. if you pay attention to those two things side by side. You're going to do really well. And not only that, Troy is so inspiring. I could listen to him talk all day about this stuff. Fascinating guy. Yeah. You should go and check it out. It's at blog dot response suite dot com slash zero zero seven. 